Hello, Packcast, DMC, Intercom, Moan. Going to dig it out here. Welcome to this video where I'm going to review some of the most important details of Packtalk Ski, which is this communication system from Kado that you can use uh, while you're skiing. Hi, my name is Janus Hecht and I'm a professional ski instructor and national examiner in the Danish ski system. At the end of this video, you're going to know much more about the details of how far it reaches and the battery life and all that good stuff. And of course, we're also going to stress test the pack talk to see how well it lives up to the bold claims that Cardo makes about it. So make sure you watch all the way to the end and hopefully uh, you'll get a better idea if pack talk is something you want to make part of your skiing experience. This is actually part two of the review where part one focuses much more about the use cases and how I experienced using Packtalk Ski. Before we jump into the video, I want to be fully transparent and let you know that Cardo did sponsor this video. Oh, really? But we agreed that it would make totally sense that we had the freedom to, to do an honest review and this is what it's going to be. If you do decide that Pack Talk is something you want to make part of your skiing experience, we do have an affiliate link down in the description that you can use to get a favorable discount. And also, you will support this channel and help us create much more content for you. With that out of the way, let's jump into the video. In the box you'll find a Packtalk ski unit, the speakers, the glue plate, the USB cable, the velcro pads, and the audio kit with integrated boom microphone and a clamp. So what's not in the box is the charger itself. I have the charging cable, but not the charger. So you can use a charger like this for an iPhone or an iPad, as long as it has the USB entrance or the USB port like that. What we did was that we bought a cheap one in the supermarket with two slots so we could charge two at the same time and that worked perfectly for us. When fully charged, uh, the Packtalk Ski has a standby time of up to a week and eight hours of talk time. So I used it fully charged from the morning and into the late afternoon while skiing and teaching and we never had a problem with the battery running out of power. Kato claims that Packtalk Ski is waterproof and weatherproof and it's able to withstand freezing temperatures. So of course we're going to stress test this by putting the Packtalk Ski here on the ice in the snowfall for 24 hours and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now the, uh, the unit has been out here for a little bit more than 24 hours and we have had some snow, so it's covered and we're going to dig it out here. Still on the ice. Yeah. So we're just going to dry it a bit and see if it works. Just want to make sure it's completely dry. Okay, so the first thing we're going to try is that going to see if we can if we can uh, start it. So All right, so it turned on. So far, so good. So now we're going to test if the, the intercom system works as it's supposed to. So we're going to connect it here. All right. And the speakers go, goes into this microphone here. And we have another unit ready here. So if, if it works when I speak in here and 
uh, the unit picks up the signal, it will be recorded over there. So I'll just go here and check it. Is there any signal? Signal? Let me check. See, can you listen in the there? There it is. There it is. Yes, and I can hear you. Perfect. <laughs> Cardo claims that Packtalk ski will fit any ski helmet if you use either the glue plate or the clamp. So which one you want to choose really depends on if you want a more permanent solution with the glue plate or you want to be able to take the whole system on and off with the clamp. But you need to be aware that the clamp won't fit any helmet. I tested it with about 40 of my own students and there were some helmets in there where the clamp didn't fit. So what we did was that we just took the clamp and we used the strap, the goggle strap, and it would be good enough for one day. So the glue plate is obviously a great solution if you want to have a more permanent setup. But that doesn't mean that you have to walk around with the unit and a microphone dangling around here all the time. You can, you can just use something to, like they say a coin, but you can use pretty much a lot of different <laughs> tools uh, to slide it off. And, and then you'll only have the glue plate here. And you can easily slide it back on when you are ready for that. So, and then you have the system back on running. If you want to go with the more permanent solution with the glue plate, you want to consider the right location and be very careful with that. Because where you place the unit will have an impact on the lane that your goggle strap will take and that will have an impact on how your goggles are sitting uh, with your helmet on your face. Not a huge issue, but something to be aware of. So Kado claims that it, it will stick there pretty much no matter what. And involuntarily, I put that to a pretty rough stress test. When I hit the snow, the glue plate came completely off from the impact. And when I contacted Kado about it, they were surprised because the glue and the glue plate is designed to withstand a fall on a motorcycle. Uh, but the unit worked perfectly fine after that. So I was impressed by that. And um, after feeling it a little bit for a few days, the skier was fine as well, by the way. The way you install the speakers is easy. You place it on the inside of your ear pad on your helmet and the Velcro system will make sure that it sits there tightly. But on many of my students' helmets, it wouldn't stick. So we always came up with a solution that would work good enough for one day. But if you have a more permanent setup and the, the speaker won't sit there tightly, you can use this a pad that comes along with the whole package. And it has glue here and you just glue it to the surface on the inside. And on the other side, it has the Velcro system that match the speaker and it will <laughs> sit there. <laughs> yeah, it won't come off. You need to divide uh, the sound quality into different categories. With the intercom system, it's a little bit walkie-talkie-ish. And it's actually fine. You get used to it pretty quickly, and then it's just how it is. The voices goes through clearly in most cases. 
Which is what you want. There's some good snow over here. Okay, I'll follow you. When you talk over the phone, the quality is good, really good. And when you listen to music, it's a really nice uh, music experience. The speakers connect to the unit with this mini jack cable here. So you do have the option of changing into a different pair of headphones like these if you prefer. And if you really want some high-end sound quality beyond the speakers, I think that you will have to go with something like these, which is possible. But I do recommend that you use a helmet, so this is probably a better solution and the sound quality is plenty good. In the system there is an automatic volume control feature, which is pretty cool because you don't have to fiddle around with your fingers to adjust everything all the time. But I did experience some weird ups and downs in the volume when I listened to music and I came down to a noisy area like the lift station. And the solution is that you just tap the wheel and you hit the audio settings and you can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic volume control and you can also just turn it off if that's what you prefer. So that's pretty cool that you have that option as well. One of the question marks I had before testing Packtalk Ski was how well it would handle wind noise. Fortunately, we had a huge storm coming in when we were at the Hintertux Glacier, so we got an opportunity to do a real-life stress test of how well the noise cancellation system would handle this. Here's what happened. So, Stine, can you uh, hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, you. Okay, that's perfect, thanks. So, I can hear you perfectly as well. So, uh, I have this inclination to yell a lot in these conditions, but I'll try to speak more calmly. And can you still hear me? Yeah, sure. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. And actually, the, the wind noise I can hear is not from the microphone, it's from um, the wind hitting my helmet. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Overall, I was really impressed with how well the noise cancellation system worked. We were able to have a calm conversation when the storm was just howling uh, around us, which was pretty cool and kind of surreal. On their website, Kato states that Packtalk Ski has a reach of 1000 meters, but that in a real life environment like a ski slope, it will probably be a bit lower than the 1000 meters. In my experience, the reach was more than enough in most situations, but there were some issues when uh, there were bends in the terrain and the two or the, the group got out of sight. So within sight it's pretty good and when the skiers come out of sight or behind curves and bends in the terrain it kind of loses the, the connection. But as soon as you get back within sight it reconnects and you're all good. The rolling wheel takes a bit of getting used to. If you roll too slowly, it may not react. And if you roll too much too quickly, it may take too much of a big jump uh, to my taste. But I got used to it and it works fine. But I would prefer like more of a smooth reaction uh, to adjust the volume. In most situations, 
Using the buttons with your gloves on is a perfectly fine solution. But sometimes I found myself just fumbling around a little bit too long and I just pulled off my glove and that was the easier solution in that situation. It of course also depends on what glove you're wearing. Okay, let's talk about how the pack talk looks. So I know the look of things is a very subjective matter. Um, aesthetically, I would prefer something slicker and more discreet. I guess the heritage from the motorcycle industry shines through in the design and look of things. However, from a functional point of view, I didn't notice the, the size of it when I was skiing. And the microphone here, it, it's actually kind of sturdy and it sits where you, where you place it. It's, usually stays there. If I was doing some really dynamic high-end skiing and I, if I was concerned that it would uh, change location here, I would just put it up here and it was completely out of the way. Overall, I'm really impressed with Packtalk Ski and its features. And it is definitely something I'm going to use in the future, both as a ski instructor and when I'm skiing in a social group. I hope this video review has helped you figure out whether Packtalk Ski is something you want to make part of your skiing experience. If you use our affiliate link in the description, you'll get a favorable discount and you'll support the channel. If you have any questions about Packtalk Ski, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Have a nice day and see you on the slopes.